there is a dimension that he wants us to walk in. And we've been talking about these areas. And there are divine requirements. I call them protocols <laughs> in walking in this dimension. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. But would you first please go to Galatians chapter 2. Hallelujah. How's everybody in night? <laughs> oh, it's a good night to die, isn't it? Glory. Glory. Galatians chapter 2. Oh, we bless you, Lord, and we just thank you. Let the wisdom and knowledge and understanding increase tonight, Master. Increase. That it may increase thirst and hunger. In the name of Jesus. In Galatians chapter 2, in verse 19. Now, we had talked about Jesus came to fulfill the law. Amen. And as you continue to be filled and led by the Spirit, and we're going to talk about some of these things, you are actually fulfilling the law. The law of what? The law of the past. The law of the commandments. And that allows you, as you are fulfilling these the law, because Jesus came to fulfill it, and you must maintain fulfilling it. Are you with me? Now the world is going to be judged by the law. Amen? Those that are not believers will be judged by the law. So if you're a believer, you're a follower, aren't you? So if you're a follower, you're staying filled with the Spirit of God. Hello? And the law is being fulfilled. And that allows you to go into another realm where there's divine requirements, where those are commands from God Almighty, Jesus. Are you with me? It is obeying these commands that allows you to walk in the third dimension. Hello? Remember the command that he gave to the disciples? There was 500 disciples. And he said to them, the day he was getting ready to depart, because he was hanging around for 40 days, fulfilling the scriptures, and for 40 days, fulfilling a life cycle, a generational life cycle, which is 40 days. And he, he stayed on the earth 40 days. And before he departed, he told his disciples in Acts 1, in verse 4, he said, listen, I command. There was a divine what? A divine what? Requirement. It was a divine requirement. 500 disciples were there. And he said, listen, I command you not to leave Jerusalem until you are what? Baptized in the Holy Ghost. And only 120 of them listened. 380 disobeyed. And they were in the festival then, weren't they? It was the Feast of Pentecost. And 380 went to the feast instead of obeying the what? Divine requirement. And you know what happened? Those 120 hit the third dimension by what? Being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do you all understand this? Amen? Does everybody get this? So see, and this continues because we want to stay in that dimension. We don't want to leave there. We want to stay in there. In Galatians chapter 2, in verse 19, would you read it with me? And Paul said, For though, for I through the law died to the law, that I might what? Live to God. <laughs> Come on. I have been what? Crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow, that's powerful. Paul learned how to walk in the third dimension. And in the third dimension, this place, and we're going to continue on with this because this is a place where warriors live. In this place, Paul not only had the revelation, but he had full understanding of the Christ that lived in him. 
Does everybody get this? He, 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 he knew about the Christ that lived in him. See, this is where he said it's no longer I that live, but him that lives. See, in this place, you can't live. Self cannot exist. Does everybody understand that? In this place, self cannot exist. It no longer exists. Only the life of Christ that dwells in you, fulfilling His will and His purpose through you. Self cannot exist. Once self is popped, it removes it from that dimension. Self does not exist in that dimension. Is everybody with me? Good. Go to 2 Corinthians 12. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Master. <laughs> sure got hot in here. Whew. Glory to God. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Are you all right? I think I am a little bit. Praise God. I'm blessed and highly flavored. Start at verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1, and it says, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to what? Visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the what? third heaven. Hello. Now there is a third heaven, isn't there? As there is a third heaven, there's a third dimension also. But that third dimension is here. That third heaven isn't. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody all right now? Good. Now, God knows such a one, such a one was caught up in the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows how he was caught up into what? Paradise. And I heard an ex inexpressible words, which is not lawful for man to utter. Now, these things cannot be uttered on this realm. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that, I might de that it might depart from me. Now I want you to understand something. He says, for though I might desire to boast, in other words, about self, he realized that there was something about self that wanted to boast. Amen? He says, man, I can't do that. Why? Because it will move me right out of the third dimension. Are you with me? And then he says, listen, I pleaded with the Lord from this infirmity. I pleaded with him about removing this buffet of Satan that hindered me. Now, I'm going to share something with you, and we have another teaching on this, but I, I truly believe that this buffet was his flesh. He was realizing that his flesh is what was getting in his way all the time. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It was and, and God couldn't heal him because it would have killed him, and he would have been no good to him on this side. Oh, hallelujah. And he pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, my plan is sufficient. For my strength is made what? Perfect in weakness. Now look at this. Paul had such revelation in a third dimension. <laughs> look at what he says. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Man, he looked for it. He looked for it. Now, go to verse 10. Therefore, I what? Take 
pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sakes. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He realized that all of these other things are nothing but an attempt to move him out of the third dimension. And when he found himself to be weak in these things, tormented in these things, hindered in these things, he realized that if he touched and agreed with them, it would move him right out. So he looked for it because he realized that he was dying, dying, dying to self. Has everybody got it? Good. Oh, hallelujah. His whole purpose... Now, Paul had many revelations. Why? Because in the third dimension, you go from revelation to revelation to revelation. Amen? It's an area where there's constant confirmation from the throne room. Something con confirmed by the Spirit that you're always being directed on. You're not being directed on the things of the natural realm. You're being directed on the things of the Spirit. Not, not that the natural realm can't be used to direct you. But see, many people are directed by the natural realm, but it's not the right spirit that's directing it. It's something that's moving them off course. And they can't get it because they're not in the third dimension. They can't see it. They can't discern it. You know, the Bible says that the spirit tells us things to what? Come. See, they can't see what's coming. Only in the third dimension can you. See, because in the third dimension, you're not bound by space and time. You have an understanding that that which was is affecting things now and what you do now is going to affect something tomorrow. Does everybody understand? See, in this realm, decisions are not made by anything associated with the natural arena. Decisions are made according to what's associated with the throne room of God. Hello? See, because we get our counsel now, the spirit of counsel is delivered counseling to you by the counsel of the throne room of God. Oh, hallelujah. That's a whole other thing. We're not going there tonight. Okay. James 1. Hallelujah. Man, you can get pulled out of that dimension like choo. You know, that's where people get all flustered and all blah, blah, blah. They get really blah, 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 blah. They get really goofy and all kinds of things and fleshly and, you know, and, and, and they're miserable and, oh, and I don't know what's the matter with, you know. It's because they're not in home. See, the third dimension is home. <laughs> See, we've been a stranger to that realm for so long that this realm should be a stranger to you and an uncomfortable place. But the third dimension should be the place where it's home. It's home because, oh, I'm in it. Come on, your river, your children of the river, man. <laughs> where does the river come from? The throne room of God. <laughs> come on, you think about it. Where did everything come from? Where did, where did the, Jesus, where did he go? To the river. Oh, he went in the river, the Jordan River. Oh, hallelujah. What's the Bible talk about? The latter rain. It's all about the water, the water, river of life. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, James 1. Thank you. Verse 2. <laughs> Lift your hands, would you please? Come on, get a drink from that river. Glory. Glory. Fill us up, Papa. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. In verse 2, my brother encountered all joy when you fall into various trials. Oh, hallelujah. The only way that can obtain, be obtained, is by being in the third dimension. Why? Because you know trials... And tribulations and so forth are an act to get you out of the third dimension because you are in danger. We're going to do a teaching about armed and dangerous about being in that dimension. Oh, count it all joy! Hallelujah! Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So you're being tested, aren't you? 
But let patience have its what? Let what? No, wait a minute. Let patience, let patience, let patience. In other words, endure, be steadfast. Don't lose focus. Let patience have its perfect work. It's what? Perfect work. Now look at this. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and what? Complete, lacking nothing. That is manifested in the third dimension. See, because in this third dimension, there is no lack. No lack. Count it all joy, huh? Hallelujah. Knowing that it is an opportunity let me tell you, trials, and this is what Paula had begun to learn to master in this dimension. Trials are opportunities for the revelation of Christ to be manifested. So you've got to remember something. The Lord is always trying to express himself through you. How many trials did Jesus go through? Since he got baptized in the Holy Ghost, it was nothing but a trial. Amen? See, it was, all of these are opportunities so that the revelation of Christ can be expressed through you. Now, not only to others, but to you. Amen? See, how are you going to know what he can do unless you go, you got to get into a place where there's such a need? You'll never, he allows you to go through trials so that you know who he really is. Do you all understand that? Look at the Jews who were in the wilderness for 40 years, weren't they? And he kept providing everything. Look at, they didn't have no shoe stores there. But their shoes and clothes grew as they grew. Food was brought forth from heaven. They didn't lack nothing. When they got thirsty, they stopped on the side of the road, hit a rock and drank. When they wanted meat, it flew in. They had room service right in the desert. When they couldn't see or know which way to go, flame came and directed them. Flame by night and a cloud by day. They didn't lack anything. Nothing. But they refused to walk in the third dimension and they all died. See, they still wanted to continue to run towards worship of tangible. They wanted to see the one that they were worshiping, but they, were, they saw it all. But yet they still kept drifting and going back to the worldly way because they were strangers in that dimension. And they felt more comfortable in the carnal dimension because they constantly were being led by how they feel. So they would build altars to Baal. And they would get in trouble. Amen? And that generation died out there. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. And verse 15. Somewhere around there. Are you all all right? How many of you want to get into that dimension? Well, let me tell you, God wants you to get in that dimension. You know, when you say, Lord, I want your will done, he says, good, let's get there. The thing is, is we kick and scream thinking we know better than God. But Lord, you know, I've been praying this way. He said, that's good, but I want you to do it this way. Anybody ever say to you, my way or the highway? Hallelujah. I got a song called Highway to Hell. It was produced by demons. Well, they've been there. They know exactly how that highway is. They got a road map right there, man. It's a wide road. <laughs> and they'd like to, you know, and, and they don't mind chauffeuring you there either.
<laughs> Let's go to 14 instead. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, nor are they, for they are what? Foolish to him. Now, if you're thinking that what's being preached tonight is foolish to you, it's because your carnal mind, your carnal mind is overriding the mind of Christ. Are you hearing me? But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So the only way that you're going to get that is to be in the Spirit. By being in the Spirit, it allows the mind of Christ to interpret for you. Are you getting this? Okay, now. In verse 15, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now you have the mind of Christ, but you, allow, you must allow the mind of Christ to have dominion over your mind. What God wants us to listen, in this third dimension, what begins to happen is you become like-minded. Your mind is no longer in dominion. The mind of Christ is dominant in the third dimension. In fact, your mind is now becomes in an area of see if I can find this word. I guess submissive. <laughs> I guess that's the simplest word that I come up with. The mind of the mind, your carnal mind become submissive instead of rebellious. Only in the third dimension. Any other dimension, it becomes rebellious because if you notice that some, something happens, the first thing you want to do is react according to the carnal mind. But in the third dimension, the carnal mind is submissive to the mind of Christ. It cannot react before the mind of Christ reacts. Are you hearing me? Oh, hallelujah. Man, we should be so thirsty and hungry we'd be willing to do anything to get in that place. In that place we are like-minded with Christ. There is a purity of love and His commands are a delight. In other words, you're saying, what do you want me to do? You are just waiting for the next command. You're like, I'm ready. Okay. See, because when somebody comes in and instructs you, if you acknowledge the, and we talked about this before, this is where people are not in that dimension or what will remove them. In other words, somebody instructs you and that person has an office in the body of Christ and or an authority, that person, God has granted an office. If you're looking at the man instead of the office, Ooh. then there will be always a rebellion towards it. But if you're looking at the office that is directed from the throne room of God, you're not looking at the man. See, the carnal mind is always looking at the man, but the mind of Christ is always looking at the office. Are you hearing this? See, this is what you'll know whether you, who's dominating your thoughts, the carnal man or the mind of Christ. And once that carnal man, if the carnal man is dominating, you are not in the third dimension. And let me share something else with you. In the third dimension, there is a cloak of humility which makes you invisible to the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. See, humility is undetected. Pride is a beep. Neon sign. Big bullseye. You are an open target. Every missile that the enemy shoots is honed in on you. See, but in, when the cloak of humility is there, in the third dimension, you're stealth. You're undetected. The devil just shoots blind. Now you will get hit with the shield of faith because you are walking not by sight, but you are walking by faith. 
is stabbing those darts. You may even see them coming. You'll sense them coming. And you'll reject them before they get there. Because you have an anti-missile system built right in your mind of Christ. <laughs> see, and, and but why in the third dimension you are multi-purpose. You're not only beating down those fiery darts and corruptible seeds, but you're loading up to attack. In this place, strategies are revealed. Are you hearing me? We're not going to talk about that tonight, though. It's coming. See, commands are a delight. Yes. Yes. See, we've got to stop looking in the natural realm where it's a, a request or, or a command or whatever. A, a, something from authority is coming from a man. Even if it's correction. Or if it's chastening. God says, I chasten those I love. See, if you're in the Spirit, you know that it's God's love corrected you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Even David said, man, I'd rather have, a, have him slap me on the head. It would be a delight to me. Why? Because he knew. Even David knew. And I want correction. Because I don't want to do the things that displease God. See, Paul realized that if he relied on his strengths, it would move him out of that dimension. Where you think you are strong is where the enemy goes. Because where you think you are strong, you leave on the side. Does everybody got it? Paul began to master the third dimension. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to get through. We haven't gone to the eight protocols yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> Please don't let me do a part three. Glory. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And lift your hands, will you, and get a drink? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, fill us and kill us. Glory to God. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Would you read it with me? You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Everybody's called to be a teacher. But you got to be faithful. You got to be the example. You can't be a teacher if you're not the example. Amen. Verse 3. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a what? As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life. Like, who cares? That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Divine requirements. Oh, Come on, I want you to put divine requirements in there. Everybody see that? So, again, in this realm is where warriors live. How many of y'all want to be a warrior? Praise God. And we got to learn how to stay in that dimension and get in there. Amen? Praise God. Now, we talk, I, I share with you that there are eight protocols. And um, I'm not sure where we left off in the last one. But the first one is to be filled and led by the Spirit. That is the first one. Did we do that one? Ephesians 5.18. Go there again. We'll double check it. Ephesians 5.18. It's to be filled and led by the Spirit. See, because you can be filled, but if you ain't led, hello? In other words, that means that you got to obey what the requirements are. 
There's a lot of people getting filled and doing nothing. Go home. Well, yeah, that's it. By the time they get home, they just got drained. The world will drain you. Does everybody understand? Did you ever see that ever read a battery commercial with the rabbit? It goes around doing symbols. Hey, it's a prophetic rabbit, man. Every time I see that rabbit, I think about Samuel. <laughs> Samuel the prophet. Why? Because what when they would go, what would go before them? The symbols and praise and worship. You know, I want to get behind that rabbit. Prophesy. <laughs> Kill the bunny. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Got real hot in here. <laughs> Ephesians 5, please. And 18, I think. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with what? The Spirit. Now listen, when you're filled with the Spirit, you know what's coming out of your mouth? Psalms and hymns. Oh, I bless you, Lord. Spiritual singing, making melody in your heart. Man, you wake up in the morning. I love you, Lord. Not, oh, these are the things I need to do. Oh, I miss such and such. Man, you know, this is this is this is the man, you you need to kick yourself in the head. Knock out the carnal mind and let the mind of Christ come forth and give dominion to Him so that you can start praising and worshiping God the first thing in the morning. So you stop waking up in the natural realm and start waking up in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, look at look, Speaking one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. To the Lord. Giving thanks. You're grateful. Yes, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Yes, I just got hit by a car, but I love you. I know it's going to work to the good. You must have a retirement plan for me or something. I don't know what's right, you know. And you know that there's a plan. Now the enemy's going to try and take you out, but all things will work to the good. What'd you just get into? A trial? Amen? Now listen, giving thanks always. He says always, just not occasionally. Not when you get blessed. Thank you, Lord. Blessed are those who persecuted for His name's sake. Hello? Thank you, Lord. You know, the Bible tells, and Paul warns, he says, there are many who do not understand Paul's writings. They didn't understand certain things. Remember, individuals certain time when they're carnal, they can't understand the things of the Spirit. So you may say something according to the things of the Spirit, and they'll say, you're an idiot. You just got to bless them. Amen? They might not get it. They may accuse you of being goofy and all kinds of stuff. They may accuse you of preaching heresies, and they didn't realize that they're the Pharisee. But you can't allow those things to move you out. You understand this? You must count it all joy. No matter what. Why? Because something's working to the good. And you're dying. Now look at the next verse. Everybody has a hard time with this one. Submitting. Woohoo. Yes, yes. To one another in the fear of God. Not in the fear of the one you're submitting to. Because if you're fearing the one that you're submitting to, then you're looking carnally at the man and not the office. Submitting to the fear and reverence of God. Lord, that's your servant. <laughs> Hello? Look at it. If you're not grateful, you're miserable. Hello? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No matter what. Thank you. So we must be filled with the Spirit. That's why every time it's an opportunity to worship, it's a time to get filled, isn't it? 
Listen, there are many testimonies in this room right now of by staying in the Spirit and what God has done for you. Walking in the third dimension, you saw miracle signs and wonders. And things disappearing, debts going. Things that were due to you were removed. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Okay. Okay, Romans 8. Glory to God. Being filled and being led. A person that gets filled with the Spirit and rejects the leading is in trouble. Because God will not fill that person until the repentance comes. And then that person will not be trusted even when he's filled. How many of y'all want to earn the trust of God? Well, see, depending on what you do in your trials is whether you'll earn the trust or lose his trust. Do y'all understand that? And how many times have we gone around that cycle? Amen? We don't want to go around that mountain. Verse 4, uh, let's see, what did I say? Oh yeah, 14. Romans 8, 14. Would you read it with me? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. Now, think about this. When the Lord said, and the sons of God appeared, and Satan appeared with them, man, they were at the throne room of God, weren't they? Well, if we're being led by the Spirit, if we're being filled and led, you're considered a son of God. Are you with me? The sons of God that came before the Lord in the book of Job were the angels. And the Bible says that we'll be like angels, won't we? And in fact, we're a little bit lower than angels. So he said, those who are led by the Spirit will be called sons of God. In verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Now, he's not talking about fear or reverence of God. He's talking about fear of losing the things of the world. But you received the spirit of adoption by where we cry out, Abba, Father. See, there is such a relationship in that realm. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children and heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be what? Glorified with Him. See, you're not caught up in your present day sufferings. For they are only a moment compared to what is going to be revealed in you. Now, who's going to be revealed in you? Christ. Believe me, you're not going to be revealed in you. He is. <laughs> Praise God. Now, we need to go somewhere. Let's go to Isaiah 58. Oh, Lord, help me. All things are possible. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Would you all read it with me? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. That your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard that you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the, take away the yoke from your mist. Now look at this. The pointing of the finger and the speaking of wickedness. Whoa, that's accusing, isn't it? Accusation, criticizing, blaming everybody else for your dirty laundry. 
If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. Your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. That's healing, man. You shall be like a watered garden. Praise God. Here we go back to the river. And like a spring of water, hallelujah, whose waters don't do not what? Fall or fail. Do not what? Fail. Man, that water ain't going to fail. It's going to constantly flow because you're children of the river, not the swamp. we got a lot of swamp creatures out there, man. Of the river. <laughs> Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. You understand? God is waiting on you. You may think you're waiting on God. God's waiting on you. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not during your own not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. Glory. Third dimension. Yes. Now listen, I will cause you to ride on the Harleys of the earth. Oh, on the hills of the earth. <laughs> and feed you with the inheritance with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, the first thing we talked about about the protocol of this is to be filled and led by the Spirit. Amen. The second thing is to fast from worldly attitudes. Come on, say it with me. Fast from what? Worldly attitudes. Yo. Hallelujah. Man, there's so much to go to. And so Okay. Guess we'll go right to the third one. Come on. That was the second one. Everybody count with me. One, two, three. I know you're all filled with the Spirit and you're drunk. I'm helping. That's all. Hallelujah. Number three. Now the Bible says that, you know, our righteousness is to exceed the scribes and Pharisees' righteousness. Why? Because you have the anointing now. Amen? That's why we must fast from worldly attitudes. Become good Samaritans. In Matthew 18. Glory to God. Number eight means new beginnings. We're going to do eight protocols. Matthew 18. Is everybody there? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And start at verse 1. And at that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Yow. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as a little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When I receives one little child like this in my name, receives me. 
So that he says, listen, you must be childlike. A child is all trusting. A child is quick to forgive. Willing to learn. And quick to repent. Amen? It's childlike. You know, a child is totally leaning on its parent or guardian. Do you all understand that? It's looking for counsel, correction, and direction. Even though they may be bucking it sometimes, their heart is to be guided in every area. Little kids have a hard time fighting their own flesh because they're little flesh creatures. Remember, those are swamp creatures first. They, they, they haven't drank from the river of life yet. That's why you got to lay hands on them as soon as they come out of the womb. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Ezekiel 18. Ooh. All right, I'll go there. Ezekiel 18. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I can hear my daughter now. My dad just called me a swamp creature. <laughs> Mom, my dad's calling me a swamp creature. We went from little flesh creature to a swamp creature. <laughs> Ezekiel 18, and verse 30. Whew, it's getting out of here. Glory. Therefore I will judge you, O house of true ministries and body of Christ. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord. Repent and turn from your all of your transgressions so that the iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a what? A new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die? Amen? So we want to repent, turn away, right? Okay, this is the third one. Childlike, to be childlike, right? And then I went to Ezekiel 18, 30 through something. 30, 31. Okay, we'll go to 32 then, all right, to finish this off. For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord. Therefore, turn and what? Live. Now, why are we talking about this? Because we just said that to be childlike is what? All trusting, quick to forgive, willing to learn, and quick to what? Repent. Amen? So then we went to repent scripture. No, it's their part of three. <laughs> Number four, Philippians three. <laughs> Whew. Philippians three, I know it's in here. Just keep flipping. The Bible says that joy is good medicine to the heart. So if you're miserable, I suggest you would both feet in the air and get filled. I'm telling you, it's wonderful to be filled with the Spirit of God. Nothing matters there. And it's just like, hallelujah. All right, Philippians somewhere. <clears throat> Three. Three. Start at verse 7, would you please? But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for what? Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain what? Christ. Now Christ means here the anointing. And be found in Him, not having my own righteousness or not relying on my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through Christ faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know Him in the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death. That by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. This is an area where Paul began to master the third dimension. He's saying, listen man, i got to relinquish everything of my past. All of my successes, all of my failures, everything. 
all of my relationships, everything. Everything. Why? So everything can be brought back brand new. So that you're allowing God to bring it, and you're not. See, when you start bringing stuff, it keeps you out of the third dimension. Because now you're concerned about losing it. Are you with me? You're concerned. See, this is where fear is grabbing hold of you. And it's keeping you from walking. Because the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Well, let me tell you, He's in the third dimension. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean He won't leave you or forsake you. He won't. But the place that you want to walk with Him is in that dimension. Where it's no longer you that live, but He that lives. And if, you, if you, you're in this place where it's He that lives in, instead of you that's living, then you don't have anything associated with you as self. See, self always wants to hold on to everything. It's It's got a big closet of memorable things. Oh, I remember this, and I remember that, and I remember this, and I... Oh, I'm not letting go of that. Oh, my. That's mine. That's mine. See, there's a fear of losing something. But we lost sight that you don't own nothing anyway. Amen? Yeah, we lose sight that we don't own nothing anyways. Everything we're wearing is being borrowed. It's going back to the owner. We don't own nothing. But we are joint heirs of Christ. He owns it all. But everything he has, I have. <laughs> but see, it's distributed in the third dimension. Because you cannot receive the things of the Spirit unless you're what? In the Spirit. Strategies are not established in the natural realm. They're established in the Spirit realm. And like I said, we'll get to that later. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? So there's an area we must relinquish our past. Cast our cares upon Him for He cares for us. That's four. Let's go to five. Everybody there? Relinquish your past. Number four. Oh, man. Okay, John 6. Oh, hallelujah. We can do it. Jesus. This is going to be quick protocol. <laughs> John 6. Everybody there? John 6 and verse something here. Let's see. Ooh. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. Are you ready? Forty-seven. Hallelujah. Number forty-seven. Don't sell it bingo, all right? John six forty-seven. Would you read it with me? Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. What's the word "believe" mean? Follow. So, if you say you're a believer and not a follower, what are you? A liar. Amen? Verse 48. I am the what? Bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. <laughs> They're dead, man. That's right. I sent them food from heaven and they died because they didn't know how to walk with me right. They grumbled and complained. I fed them. You know, even the wicked get blessed. Oh, Holly. Do you, you remember when some of them, uh, uh, on, the, on the one day, they tried to gather up enough stuff for days, you know? Yes, and it rotted. God didn't allow it to hang around. Because He was giving them what? Fresh manna. And you must desire fresh manna. You must look for it every day. That's number five. Desire fresh manna.
This is the bread which came down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of this world. And the word became what? Flesh. We must desire fresh manna. Glory. Proverbs 1.7 See, when the people were in the wilderness, they were looking towards heaven, waiting for the manna to fall. They wanted to make little rice cakes and stuff. Manna pancakes, you know. <laughs> they call them mama pancakes now. <laughs> But they were out looking for it. And where were they looking? They were looking up. It's coming. See, they were looking for fresh manna. You must look for fresh manna every day. See, if you're walking in that arena, you are looking for this, some revelation that's going to impart in you a part of Christ. And every time that there's an impartation of Christ, there's less something of you that leaves. Until you finally meet him face. The Bible says when we awake we'll be what? Like him. Glory to God. Proverbs 1 7. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Ooh. Reverence to God is number six. Not only reverence, reverence is a representation of respect and honor. When you respect and honor an office of God, you're walking in the fear of God, aren't you? Amen? There are things, you know, the fear of God, the, the devil loves to uh, tempt you to disqualify you in that realm of the fear of God. Believe me, if people really had the reverence and the fear of God, they wouldn't be doing things they do and saying things they'd say. Amen? So the sixth thing is to what? Maintain the fear of the Lord. You know, there's two types of fear of the Lord. The first fear is a reverence and love for Him. The second fear is what He can do to you. That's what gets people back in position sometimes. Whoops. Okay, I lost the first one. Let's catch the second one. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Let's get back to that first one. Okay. You know, you start feeling that heat. Whew. And that ain't the Holy Ghost. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to this first one. You start smelling something. Oh, Lord. Starts reminding you. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the sixth thing is the fear of the Lord. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Yeah, as you begin to smell your flesh cooking, you know, no. let's get back to the first reverence. Oh, hallelujah. Titus chapter 2. Is everybody there? Verse 11. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority and let no one despise you. The seventh thing that you must do is take authority. Drive out your enemies with using your weapons of binding and loosening. The Bible says make no place 
for the devil. So if you get rid of them, there ain't no place for them. Amen? That's the seventh thing. We're going to go to the eighth thing right now. Now in Mark 16, 16 through 18, and I'm not going there, the Bible says, and those who believe in my name, they will what? Cast out devils. Amen. Lay hands on the sick and speak with new tongues and all kinds of stuff. What are they doing? They're driving out their enemies out of the territories that have been designated to you. Okay? Good. First Timothy 4, since we're in the T's. Oh, praise you, Lord. Eight protocols. The first one is be filled and be led. The second one is fast from worldly attitudes. The third one is become childlike. Right? The fourth one is relinquish your past. The fifth one is desire fresh manna. The sixth one, fear of the Lord. The seventh one, take your authority. And number eight. Number four. First Timothy chapter four, I mean. Hallelujah. <laughs> and verse twelve. First Timothy four, verse twelve. Let no one despise you. You are no, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Ooh, that sounds like third dimension. That's walking in the third dimension. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Do not le neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the elders. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that you pro your, your progress may be what? Evident to all. Is your progress evident to all? Take heed to yourself and do the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Now, the eighth thing is that do not neglect the gift that's in you. Stir yourself up to maintain a high level of faith. Are you with me? So do not neglect the gift that's in you. Now, I'm, I'm going to put one other scripture with this, okay? Jude. 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 Stir yourself up. Don't, uh, number eight is do not neglect the gift that's in you. So we were to stir ourselves up, aren't we? So how do you stir yourself up? Don't, now let me share something with you. Coffee does not stir yourself up. Soda in the morning does not stir you up. Cold showers do not stir you up. He's talking about praying in the Spirit. Praising and worshiping the Lord. Getting filled. Amen? You must stir yourself up. That's called zealous, isn't it? Stir yourself up. You don't get out of bed with Mr. Oppression. You get out of bed with the joy of the Lord. It's a new day. Glory to God. You get another opportunity to rescue a soul, to expand the kingdom of God, to cast out a devil. You get another day, yes, to take territory. You get another day, another opportunity. Every day is another opportunity. Don't look at it as just another day. Stir yourself up. Have everybody in here been called by the Lord? Hallelujah. Well, if you know you've been called by God, then you know He's got something for you every single day. Every day. Stir yourself up in Jude. In verse... Uh, oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, look, I want to I wanna go somewhere here. Go to 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. Oh, goodness. They are in a dimension unaccountable. And they mouth swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. In other words, not being filled with the Spirit. Amen? But you, beloved, you, building yourselves up, stirring yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So the eighth thing is, is to stir yourself. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Pray in the Holy Ghost in the morning. Pray. Stir yourself up. Yeah, glory, hallelujah. You know? Stir yourself up. Why? Because you're coming out of the natural realm. You're actually changing the atmosphere around you. Something is opening for you to begin to walk into. It's called the third dimension. Amen? Eight protocols. Do them. You'll find change in your life. Warriors live in the third dimension. We'll talk about those Tuesday. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed and we thank you for the fresh manna. We thank you for the established protocols. And Lord, we ask that you'll give us strength to say yes to you and power to say no to the devil. Grant us revelation, Lord, as we take authority and drive out the enemy. As we come obedient to these protocols, we ask, Father, that your kingdom will be expanded, that souls will be rescued, and that they would be discipled for your glory. Lord, I pray each and every one of the disciples in here will become disciplers in Jesus' name.